There are hundreds of LED lights that have hit the market recently that are targeted at you know low budget indie filmmakers or YouTubers like me. And it's frustrating navigating the market and trying to find out what you're gonna buy. Uh, I'm, I'm used to photography where you know power ratings and things like that are easily looked up. Uh, you know color information is easily obtained. Um, but with these new LED lights, they can be very challenging to pull the trigger on. I mean, because you don't know what you're gonna get. Is it gonna match with previous lights that I've got? So what I want to do with this review, I'm gonna go over three of the lights, um, the one, the ones that I bought recently, and kind of go over the pros and cons, and you know the price to performance ratios, uh, form factor, all of that kind of stuff, and, uh, and and we'll get into all of that. First, I want to go through each light, just kind of give you an overview of what the light is, the pros and cons of just kind of how it looks, uh, and of course the, the pricing and, and all that. Now the first one we're gonna look at is this Aperture Lightstorm. It is gonna be the most expensive one. You know, it's almost $700. There's a lot of cool things about it though. First of all, it's just big. It's a lot of light. It packs the, the most punch. It is a full 1K light. Um, and I'll actually, I have a light meter and I'll actually be able to compare these lights. Uh, that was one of the things that was kind of frustrating when I was first getting into buying lights is it's like, I don't know, what, did, what, what do all these things mean? What do all these ratings mean? Um, I want to be able to compare them side by side. Okay, so... This guy right here, what's interesting about this is the LED lights are just sporadically placed across the whole thing. Uh, so they're able to pack in a little bit more, I think, with some kind of uh, design. I don't really understand it. It does have the barn doors. I'm actually thinking about just taking the barn doors off because, you know, if you try to tilt this thing down, the barn door gets in the way. Um, you could use like a bracket or use a boom stand, which I've done to actually get that angle, but it's kind of annoying. Although it does have a frame within a frame, which is nice. A lot of the other LEDs and all the other ones don't. You just you attach directly to the LED panel. Um, another cool thing about it is it's got no fan, no noise, no nothing that you're gonna get out of this thing. It's all just this aluminum frame. The body is strong. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. The other thing that really separates this from the other lights is this cord right here. The actual controls for the light are not on the back of the light. They're actually uh, dangled below uh, with this controller pack. And you've got a um, webbing here to actually attach it to your stand. What you can do here is actually control the power, you know, the channel and all that, because it does have a wireless uh, controller, which is um, about the same as all the other lights. They all have some kind of on-off button dimmers and all that. This is Aperture's HR72S. It's the spot, you know, narrow focus beam light. Um, it's got the two batteries right on the back. Now, what, what's really neat about this is you can plug in power and just run off the wall. But another thing that you can do is charge both of the batteries at the same time. You know, I've got three of these things and powering four batteries or six batteries, or if you want to have backups, you want to, I mean, you're looking at what, uh, you know, 12 batteries or something. So being able to charge two at a time uh, with, with each light and not to have to have separate chargers is really cool and um, you know it's just it's just a nice thing um, it, it has a dimmer switch right here on the back so you're forced to actually uh, touch the light stand and reach up and change the power if you want to do that kind of stuff you can do it uh, from your remote but if you really want to dial things in exactly the way you want and measure and, and be able to see what you're doing you've got to actually go up to the stand you can change the group and channels just like the other light the panel is 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 pretty compact Packed. It gets pretty warm. I have not heard any kind of fan. It's got it's got these vent holes and stuff in it. It's got uh, mounting holes on the sides. So just something you know uh, that's different about it. Um, it, it does come with a diffuser uh, that can slide in and a CTO, um, like a 3200 uh, gel that slides right in. And I'm actually using two of these right now to light me currently. I have one over to this side, one over here, uh, going through some diffusion. Now this is the Yong Nuo 600L. This is going to be the cheapest light of them all. Uh, one thing that's different about this is it is a bi-colored light. It will run tungsten or daylight. Um, what's weird about it though is it only runs off one battery at a time. So if you can put one battery on the right side for daylight, and if you want to run uh, tungsten, you actually move the battery over the other side. 
Now, what, what you can actually do is put two batteries in and turn the tungsten uh, bulbs on and the daylight bulbs at the same time, but you're mixing the colors, you're getting a little bit more output. But for this test and the power test and the color test, I'm going to run it in daylight mode just so we can compare with these other lights and t test the output. I don't really see anybody using both at the same time unless you just absolutely had to, but it's a little more versatile for that. And I, and I might use this for like rim lights and warm things for the background. Um, uh, maybe not for skin tone. Uh, it does have the barn doors uh, on the front. Um, you know, just a flimsier build. Huge downsize. It does have fans that will kick on. If you actually look on the back here, you'll see a fan right here. And that thing will kick on and it's it's not crazy loud, but if you've got this anywhere near the mic, it's, it's a no-go for me. All right, so I've got the results from the power test. And what I did was I took the light meter and I put it exactly 10 feet away from the very center of the LED light and I faced the LED light directly at the light meter. I put the light meter in a mode where it um, basically adjusts in third stop increments. So what I'll do is I'll put all of this stuff down in the description box because it can get a little bit confusing when you're trying to compare things. I'll also throw it up on the screen as we go through. <clears throat> so it's important to know that I put the light meter in like what's called an aperture priority mode. So I set the ISO to 100, set the f-stop to 2.8. That, it doesn't really matter what I set it to. What matters is the varying degree between each um, change. And I ran each light from 100% power to 75 to 50 to uh, 25 to 10 percent and I looked at the different uh, power rating changes. I also took photos uh, with my 6D in a raw mode just to see what the white balance was like at different power ratings and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that and kind of see the variation between the lights. Um, so let's start with the aperture light storm. Now we're in this thing at 100 percent power and at f2.8 at ISO 100 it recommended 1 80th of a second um, which is the most um, power I got out of any of the lights, not surprising, by a long shot. Um, and as we work our way down at 75%, it was 25. We lost a lot of light there. Look how much light we lost. Um, at 50th, or at 50%, we were at 1 13th of a second. At 25% power, 1 4th. And at 10% power, <laughs> 1 over 0.6. So it, one thing I will notice about this light storm is it, the uh, latitude it has across the whole range is enormous, going from you know, 1 80th all the way down to 0 0.6. And I'll actually, in the description box, maybe I'll go through and actually do the math on the stops. I probably can't do the third stops in my head right now. The next most powerful light was Aperture's HR762C. So it rolls off the tongue just so well. So the aperture was 1 30th of a second at 100% power. And quite a big difference between that and the light storm. Uh, at 75% power, this is where it gets really interesting, it read 1 25th of a second. So that's the same as the light storm. So if you put the light storm and the aperture 672C at 75% power, they will be about the same. Now, this light meter only reads at one third stop increments. So they're not gonna be exact, but within a third stop, that's, that's where they're at. At 50% power, it read 1 15th of a second. So it's actually stronger than the light storm at 50% power. Then it drops down to 1 6 and 0 0.5. So about the same at 10% power, which is pretty interesting. So that 75 to 100% range is really where that light storm goes into like full throttle mode. Now let's move on to the Yongnuo 600L. I put this in daylight mode um, with one battery at 100% power. It reads 1 13th of a second. That is abysmal. So it's roughly the same as the apertures at 50% power. So pretty incredible, the big difference there. It's more than a stop difference between uh, daylight and the aperture. At 75% power, it read 10, 1 1 tenth, and at 50% power, 1 tenth as well. So there's roughly not enough of a difference between 75 and 50% power for it, for it to be more than a third stop. At 25% power, 1 sixth, and at 10% power, 1 fourth. So at 10% power, it's still kicking out a pretty good amount of light. I went ahead and flipped it over to the tungsten mode. I threw a battery on the other side, and at 100% power, it only reads 1 tenth. So it's less powerful in tungsten mode than it is in daylight. That's something t that you might want to consider. Um, and just for, you know, funsies, I threw the Yongnuo 300 version two on there. And 
at 100% power with one battery, this tiny little light put out one thirteenth, which basically is the same as the 600L in daylight mode. So the 600L is really like two 300s, 300s in tungsten and 300s in daylight, but the tungstens are just not quite as powerful. And it's, it's great to have, I guess, if you want to go back and forth, but you know, you're not really getting that power and you can always put a tungsten gel on the 300 and pretty much do the same thing and actually take up less space. So that's power, but let's look at color. The apertures are rated 95 plus on the color reproduction index. I think that's what CRI stands for, which is very good, which is, you know, like industry standard type stuff. You know, the really high end LEDs are 98 plus and 99 plus and all that, but you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars per LED. All right, is this the Aperture Live Storm? Straight out of camera, raw image, no adjustments made. Uh, white balance and, and tint are basically as shot. I set the camera to 5500 Kelvin, essentially. So if we actually correct this with uh, the eyedropper tool and the gray card, it wants to warm up this image to 6250, 6200, around that range, you know, depending on where you click. Um, so it's a little bit on the blue side. Um, let's let's go over to the, the Aperture Amaran HR572, whatever. When we white balance this guy, it's pretty similar. It wants to be in about the 6000 range. Um, now, the real in interesting one is this 600L. Now, it look how orange it looks, just straight out. And if you white balance this guy, it wants to be down to 5,000. So if you shot, if you set your camera at 5,000, you get a nice, pretty neutral image. However, you're almost a thousand off from these other two lights. And in general, like lights are not going to be perfectly at 5,500, but you don't want to be this off. So if I were to mix and match these lights, this would be a no-go. However, um, you know, these apertures aren't great. They aren't calibrated right at 5,500 either. Now, one thing to be noted is it's not just about calibration at a certain color temperature or magenta tint, which a lot of these will have a green or magenta issue, which uh, I, actually this young new is really good at. The big thing is skin tones. So what I noticed with these 600Ls is the skin tones just don't look good. Like even though the Kelvin is correct, the actual like the way that colors look and skin tones look just look really crappy on the Young Nuo, and and they tend to look a lot better with the apertures. So that's something to think about. It's not just about these white balance numbers. So takeaways. These are just my personal opinions after using these lights. The Aperture Light Storm, hands down, buy it if you can afford it. Buy multiple of them if you can afford it. Um, there are a few downsides that are going to cost you a little bit more money. Like, for example, I didn't mention this earlier, but um, it has a V-mount battery attachment, which is great. And V-mount batteries are great, and they're going to last you a long time. Higher capacity, all that kind of stuff. It's, it is a professional battery. It's a professional standard. But if you try to use like a V-mount like adapter, and I tried one with the two Sony LP batteries, Batteries, I could not get the thing to work above like 80 90 percent power and even when it did if you let it run for a while it would then drop out and you have to lower it down to 70 percent power so just something to consider um, it's kind of pointless to use that thing like we did the test earlier it's pointless to run that thing at 75 percent power because you're now at the same power rating as the other light so you're better off just using the other one so if you're gonna use it in the field without cords you better invest in the v-mount system and that's can be a little bit more expensive but but if you can't afford it, hands down, color, power, boom, it's got everything you need. That's what I'm using right now. Um, and I pretty much run that thing at 100% power all the time because I want to be at the highest f-stop I can be in low light or indoors. Like right now I'm at f4, which isn't that depth. You know, I'm at f4 at like 35 millimeters. So if I sit back here, I'm going to start kind of falling out of focus. And I'm using this thing at 100% power to be able to keep my ISO low enough so that I'm not all grainy and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, that's just the way I run. Now the HR672S, this is like by far the best value out there hands down for color and power. This thing puts out a lot of power for how small it is. I was actually so surprised when I did the test at the kind of power readings I was getting. Also uh, color, I mean this thing, has good color. In general, like they match. I've got three of them and I ran them all and they all match um, and they blend really good with the light storm. And you can get two of them for less than the cost of one light storm. And there is a kit right now where you can buy two of them with light stands 
um, and brackets and batteries and the chargers, everything, and you're ready to go. Uh, and you you could easily, for under $1,000, set up a full three light set. Uh, it's pretty incredible, the value you're getting there. And, and there's nothing on the market that can compete with these guys right now. Now, the last on the list, the Young Nose. I highly suggest not buying the 600L for any reason, because first of all, you're getting less power um, on both tungsten and daylight side. And the thing's bigger, and you're only able using half the LED lights at any given time. Um, the color was not great. Like I said, you have to balance that thing so low. The build quality is just really flimsy. Um, it's just not something that's gonna last you a long time. It doesn't have the output. I don't really recommend it unless you just are completely strapped for cash and you have no other options. Full disclosure, I have not been uh, paid or sponsored. No one sent me any lights from any of the manufacturers. And I just simply, these are the lights I did a lot of research on and I wanted to get some of the information on them. And I thought I'd make this review video. And don't forget to check the description box for links to all these lights, as well as the breakdown of the power ratings. And I'll actually put the stop differences between them. I hope this video has been a little bit of help. You can go down in the description box and check out uh, the links to all of these lights. I'm gonna use my Amazon link that kind of helps me out. You know, it costs a lot of money to buy all this equipment and sound equipment and the time and it takes to put into these videos. And so I would appreciate that. Anyways, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content from me and you guys have a great day.